We're on? Welcome everyone to our uh, Monday Night Shewer. The first Monday Night Shewer of the year. I want to talk about something very interesting today. But before I do, our Shewer is sponsored by the Yunatano family. As a Sudat Hodaya, Hashem uh, blessed them with a baby, yes. And uh, there was everything went well, everything went good. Baruch Hashem. So our Shewer is uh, to give thanks for all the Nisim flow that Hashem did with us. I myself had a baby not long ago. And when I was driving my wife home from the hospital, and I told her, we told each other actually, we said, how many miracles Hashem did to us? It's like on Pesach night when we sit in the thing and we say, if Hashem took us out of, uh, uh, took us out of Mitzrayim, but he didn't open up the sea, Dayenu. If he opened up the sea, but didn't bring us to Har Sinai, Dayenu. Just, and at the end, at the, all the Dayenus, we say, oh, look how many things Hashem did to us. But the truth is, everything in our life Hashem did to us. Amen. And everything is good. There is no Ra in front of Hashem. No such thing as Ra. The Ra is just His Terpanim. Just His Terpanim. Is the father bad when he gives the patch to his kid to put him in the right way? He's not bad. He does everything for the sake of what? To put his kid in the right way. And I, when the kids grow up, what do they say? If it wasn't for my father's patch, I wouldn't be who I was today. So we have to say thank you for all the things that Kadosh Baruch Hu did to us. All the miracles. You know, even today, the doctor tells my wife, as the, you know, the child has to, has to start feeding. And she says, you know how many problems there is with children that they don't know how to feed from the mother. And we, we don't think about these things. Just the fact that a child knows. How does he know this? It's not an automatic thing. It's something that comes from the PLO. Something that comes from the So we have to say thank you to Hashem. When we learn how to say thank you for, to Hashem, we automatically become happy in our life. The fact that we're alive, that we're well, that we're healthy, Baruch Hashem. So, Bezot Hashem Yitbarach, may HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless you and your family with long life. May you be zochel a ben zachar. May you be zochel a yeladim tzadikim. Shalom b'ay, refua shlema, aslacha, parnasa tova, shefa rav. May you make in two days what you usually make in six. How is that? <laughs> I should have said one. I already said two. I don't know why I said that. Okay. So, let's go to our shiur right now. We're not going to be speaking about Parashat Noah today. And the reason we're not speaking about Parashat Noah... I feel the one part of Parashat Bereshit that is so overlooked, that is not seen, that is not delved deep into, that's learned very uh, ala pshat, is the one part that we have to talk about today. Because last week we started talking and you know we went from one thing to another thing, we started talking about Bereshit, the days of creation, the light, the Torah, the Zohar, Kadosh, Bishu, Mar Yochai, and we missed it. So tonight I want to talk about the story of Cain and Heather. The two brothers, the two first children of Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon, the Gemara says two went on the bed, seven came out of the bed. Adam and Hava had seven kids. Cain with a twin, Hevel with two twins. These children of Adam Arishon were supposed to be the population of the world. But Cain kills Hevel. And Cain himself, the Gemara says, all of his children were wiped out in the flood. There is not one person that is a descendant of Cain. Not one. Everything is wiped out. And Hevel, instead of Hevel populating in Cain, Shit populated the world. Shit was the third son of Adam. He had him at the age of Abraham of 130 years old. After 130 years of Teshuvah and separating from his wife, for 130 years, he... Did how you say Shlomi? He did Shalom bite with his wife. Look at the story of Adam Arishon. How he did Shalom bite with his wife. Adam Arishon is Yitzir Kapav Shalakados Baruchu. He is the creator. He is he is made by the create by the creator himself. Not just the Nishama. All our Nishamot are made by Hashem. But the body too. <laughs> After what? <laughs> he Trust me, he didn't even care what you looked like. Adam didn't even care what you looked like. How is that? That's how it is. You know what kind of tzaddik uh, Adam Arishon was? We make tshuva during Shavavim for 40 days. We maybe fast twice the whole Shavavim. And we think we're in the Baba Sali already. Okay? That's who we are. Okay? Adam Arishon for 130 years 
The man was sitting in Me Gichon, in the waters of Gichon till his neck, his body, everything became Chaluda, Chaluda from the water hitting. You know how beautiful he was? They say that Sarah Imeinu was such a beautiful woman. The Gemara Masechet Megillah says there are five beautiful women. Rachav Azona, Avigail, Esther, some say Vashti. They were extremely beautiful women, not just in, in personality. As the Gemara says by Rachel Imeinu, Rachel Imeinu, Yifat Torah, Yifat Maria. Yifat Torah, Yifat Maria means she had a beautiful personality. She had chen, she had charm. But real beauty, the Gemara says five, five women. Esther, Vashti, Avigail, Chava. Uh, Sarah and Chava. The Gemara says Sarah was such a beautiful woman. In truth, she was very beautiful. That if you would take the most beautiful person in the world, the most beautiful creature, and you would put it in front of Chava, the Gemara says she would look like a monkey. You would think that it's a monkey. To that extent, that's how ugly it would be compared to Sarah. Sarah Imenu, I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm saying what the Gemara says, in front of Chava would have the same exact comparison. And Chava in front of Adam Arishon would have the same exact comparison. And Adam's countenance in front of the Shekhinah Gdosha also would have the same comparison. Could you imagine what, what, what these people look like? Could you imagine? Do you know what kind of lives they live? So it says... By Adam Arishon, he separated from his wife. He goes into Megichon, 130 years. During these 130 years, unfortunately, he didn't do it on purpose, Chas v'shalom. He didn't do, I don't want to say it, uh, you know what I'm talking about, that Avera, where you waste what you're not supposed to waste. Where you try to speak in a nice way. We like to speak in a nice way. We don't want to say things. We want to speak in a nice way. So he, he didn't do it on purpose. People think Adam Arishon did it on purpose for 130 years. Heavily fatse piyem, chas v'shalom. To think that Adam Arishon, Yitzir Kapav Shagadosh Baruch did it on purpose? No, chas v'shalom. But during 130 years, you know how many times the auntie came and visited him in Meg Yichon? You know how many times? Chas v'chalila, but that's what it was. And after 130 years, all those nitzatzot, HaKadusha, went to waste. From those nitzatzot, HaKadusha, you know what came out? We're sitting here in the room right now. We are those nish- we are we are those nishim during 130 years, and that's exactly why Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai sat in the cave for 13 years to fix those 130 years that Adam Harishon was sitting in the Megichon, and that's why Yochevet also gave birth to Moshe Rabbeinu at what age? 130 years. And that's why during the month of Elul we say how many gates are open? 13 gates. And that's why in Yom Kippur, we also say the 13 attributes of mercy over and over and over again. This, and that's why when is a person considered a man, man chayav a mitzvot at the age of 13 years old. What's this number 13? If you take the name of God, there's three names of Havaya in the world of Arich Anpin. This world of Arich Anpin, this attribute of God called Arich Anpin is Keter. When God reveals himself in the crown, what does that mean when he reveals himself in the crown? The king has a special power. Lahavdil, the president. Every year, not every year, I think at the, at the, every year, I think, he has the power to pardon some. He, he, has a, he pardons. He takes a list, very politicized, but he pardons people. He also commutes sentences. That's what he did to Rabashkin, by the way. Trump, he, com- he didn't pardon him, by the way. He commuted his sentence. He just shortened it. Still, it's a very big chesed what he did. Remember that time on Hanukkah? Yeah. So HaKadosh, and how does he have that power? How does the king have that power? Because he wears the crown. Because he is the king. Because he is the president. So when HaKadosh Baruch Hu wears the crown, when we say he is the king, he is the crown, he pardons everybody. Because in front of Hashem, we're only one person. We're not one separated collective amount. We're not a community of people. We're one person. So if the president, he has the power to pardon many people, HaKadosh Baruch Hu only has to pardon one person. Adam Arishon, we're Adam Arishon. We were in Adam Arishon. We are one collective unit. Call Israel, Arevim Zelaze. So this thirteen, this number thirteen, is really three Havayot. If you think three times Havaya, how many letters are there? Four times three is how much? Twelve. Ima Kolel, thirteen. With the the numbers itself, 
where the actual Havaya is 13. This number 13 is in the world of Arichan Pin, the world of Keter. Every time you say, That Amonai that you're supposed to have Kavana, you're supposed to have Kavana, that in this world of Arich, that the power of Hashem should come down from this world of Keter, I'm teaching you deep Kabbalah right now, should go down to the worlds of Chokhmah and Bina, and then come down to his Midot. His Midot is Chesed, Givura, Tifer, Netzachod, Yisod, and he should make everything part, and he should pardon everyone. Everyone should be pardoned. That's the Kavanah you're supposed to have. What do we do? We're Tukis. You know what Tukis are? You know, it's beautiful. The nice tune, right? You know, I was once speaking to someone. He's like, oh, I love coming to Yom Kippur. I said, why do I come to Yom Kippur? I love the manginot. It makes me feel in the mood. Kol HaKavod, Kol Yisrael Kedoshim Hem. So what's your favorite? So they said, our favorite is when you guys say V'yavor. The person was Chiloni. V'yavor, I feel, I feel like a nice... Why does he feel... What, what's, what's so special about it? It's not some of the special things. In, in your neshama, those three havayot are beating. You know when it comes into fruition? You know when it comes into effect? Every day, three times a day. You know when? When you say, Sim shalom, tova, o bracha, haim chen vachesed, baruch atah Hashem, hamevarech et amosel, bas shalom. And that word, bas shalom, is gematria shin ayin chet. 378. In this 378, there's 378 lights in shamaim. If you take the name of Hashem, what's the biggest name of Hashem? That's mercy. What's mercy? Havaya is mercy. Above Havaya, there's another name of mercy, Kel. Right? That's why people like to put the name Kel in names. If you see in the Judaism, if you open up the book of Divrei, I mean, so many names you used to put. Uh, Yidi'el, Yoda'el, this, everything Kel, 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 Kel. Why? Kel is Chesed. They found in Egypt, the archaeologists... The Egyptians don't want to do a lot of archaeology over there. They don't want it to find a lot of proof in the, in the ancient palaces over there of Judaism. But they found over there in the cave, in the cave, in the upper delta. The upper delta is where Goshen was, where the Jews were, Pitom and Ramses was, where the Jews were mostly slaves over there. Over there, it printed in ancient Hebrew, etched into the world, into the, into the cave, the name of Hashem. Which name? Kel. They didn't know the name of Havaya, by the way. Bishmi Hashem, where God tell Moshe, Bishmi Hashem, don't know that to him. I never revealed myself even to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov in the name of Havaya. They didn't, they didn't perceive me in the name of Havaya. They perceived me in the name Kel Shakai. Bishmi Kel Shakai, they knew me in Kel Shakai. Kel Shakai, according to the Ari, is the world of Bria. They never reached Hashem in the world of Atzilut. Could you imagine the level of Moshe Rabbeinu? He didn't even yet take them out of Egypt. He didn't yet take them out of Egypt. And he was already perceiving Hashem in the world of Havaya to the point. When he goes to Paro, he says to Hash he says to Paro, Hashem told me to take you guys out. And he says he says Sham Hashem to Paro. He says, Yutke Vavke told me to take it. He's like, what's Yutke Vavke? He opens up his book. He had a book of gods over there. They believed in God. They believed in the name of Elohim, by the way. Paro knew there was one God. How do we know that? Remember when Yosef came out of the pit after after 12 years? Yosef came out of the pit. And what does he what does Yosef tell Paro? Biladai Elohim Shlom Paro. Elohim will did Paro accept it? He ex of course he did. He, he accepted his advice. And we see that he believed in the name of Elohim. But Moshe didn't come to Paro with the name of Elohim. He came to Paro with the name of Havaya. And Paro says, Mi Hashem. Who is it? Who is, who's Havaya? I chose I know all the gods. You're going to tell me there is a name Havaya? You should know one thing. In the book of the Navi, in the Navi, it says over there, Hashem, in the book of Yirmiyahu, I believe it's in Yirmiyahu, Hashem says something very scary to the Jewish people through Yirmiyahu and Navi. He says, you guys think you serve me, build the Beit HaMikdash, you bring me Korbanot, pray with me three times a day. He says, Bakol Makom, every place in the world, Muktar uh, Lishmi. All the Goyim know who I am. All the Goyim believe that there is a God above all their gods. Every go all the Goyim believes says, what do you makes you guys different than them? Me because Zod Michem, who asked you guys to come and serve your most Hatserai? Hadam Atudim Eshte, you think I drink the blood of all your Korban? No, Hashem says, well, you think I need all of this? Everything you guys do, you do for yourself. Everything I want to give you, Hashem says. Anyways, I don't want to get off into more, uh, so much of attention. The name of Havaya is a very special name. Now, but there is a name of Chesed called Kel. This Kel, if you spell it out, Aleph. Aleph Lamed Fe. Lamed, Lamed Mem Dalet. If you do two, two of them, you're going to get the number 376. Kematria <coughs> Shalom. That's the Kavanah you're supposed to have when you say Baruch Atah Hashem. Hamevarechet Amo Yisrael. Ba Shalom. Shalom. You're supposed to have the Kavanah. Aleph Lamed. 
Aleph Lamed. And that name is in Keter. It's not a regular name, this name. This is in the highest level. This is the name, this world of Keter, when the Jewish people went to Hashem after the Kriyat Yamsov and they tested Moshe. They tested God. They said to God, you know what they said to him? Hayesh Hashem bekirbenu im ayin. Is God in our midst or nothing is in our midst? That's what, what does ayin mean? Nothing. Is nothing in our midst. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, whoever thinks that's what the Jews meant, no ela to'eh. He's making a big avera of kfira. If you think that's what the Jews meant, chasom yikad avera of kfira. Like somebody, we're going to get to it. So what does that mean when they ask, hayesh Hashem bikir, if it's God in our midst or ayin, or nothing is in our midst? Ayin, ayin, is another name for the world of Keter. It's total nullification. Why is it total nullification? In the world of Keter, you could do no bad. In this world of and when God is revealing himself in this world of Keter, when he wears the crown, why do we say in Elu, the king is in the field? Why do we want so much to call him the king? Because when the king is revealed, Avinu Malkeinu, he's revealed in the world of Keter, Arichan Pin. When he's revealed in the world of Keter, you, he doesn't punish you. You can do no wrong. Why can you do no wrong? Because you don't count. His light is so strong, it's like you're nullified in his light. It's like you don't exist. So they asked Moshe, we want to get to such a high level. We want Hashem to reveal himself to us in the level of Ayin. We want to be in a total state of Bitul, total state of Ayin. We want to be like there's, well, we're nothing. Not Hashem is nothing, God forbid. We're nothing. We want to do no wrong. Moshe Rabbeinu said, you guys are nuts. Chas v'shalom to think like that. Because if you think Hashem is in a state of ayin, that means you could do averot. Do nothing. Do you know the Zohar, Tikkun Zohar? Whoever reads Tikkun Zohar, he knows he has the... Pa- it's a very big thing to read Tikkun Zohar. If you finish it, I remember when I was learning in, uh, in Williamsburg, the rabbi there of Moadeb used to tell us, he said, whoever finishes Tikkun Zohar, mekabel matana. He gets a matana from Hashem. It's like you have a kid, you get, a matana, you get a matana. Like if you finish Tikkun Ezor, you get a matana. So he says over there at the end of the Tikkun Ezor, how come in the time of the flood, how long did uh, they live over there? How long did Adam Arishon live? 930 years? What did he do already for so long? Who, uh, what's his name? Metushelach lived for 900, I think 69 years. Longest ever lived. Um, another one lived over there, 912, 900 and this, it is. Lemech, Lemech, who was the father of Noah, lived till how much? 777, 777. You understand? Yeah, maybe that's what that's why I say Melech all the time. Melech HaMashiach, I don't know. But that's what Lemech, Lemech lived for 777. He was already going, Noah lived for how long? We're in the parashat, Noah, we'll give you a little trivia. Throw me a number. Nine what? 960? 960, close. 965. 962. 950. 950. Yeah. But Bechoreki, after at the age of 501, his dear son had to give him a very close Brit Mila. What was the next 300 of years of life? What was it? Gone. Gone. Finito. Nothing. Sleeping. Imagine living that kind of That's why after he came out of the flood, do you ever hear of him after again? He gets drunk, the thing happens. Do you ever hear of him again? A Zachar, without the Zachar, he's not a Zachar, he's a Nekeva, Chas Shalom. That's what Ham did to him. Let's go back. So uh, the Am Yisrael asked HaKadosh Baruch Hu, does Hashem reveal himself in the, in the Ayin or in the Havaya? We have to understand one thing. Why do we want Hashem not in the Keter? Oh, so the Tikkun Zohar says, I'm sorry, the Tikkun Zohar says, that why did they live such long lives? Because in that time, if you pay attention, the first parasha in the Torah spans over 1,000 years. Just the first parasha is over 1,000 years of life over there. It's the longest. So they had the zechutz, the tikkun ezor, that, that, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was in the revealment set, state of Keter at that time. He had the crown on. When Hashem is in the state of the crown, he's called Arich Anpin. What's Arich Anpin? In the Mashal, we call it like a grandfather. Does a grandfather get angry on his kids? No. If he's Bukharian, maybe. But usually, the grandfather is very close to his kids. He has white beard. You know, he's already Zakeh. Don't get angry at them. Give them the candy. Let them stay awake. This, that. Depends what kind of grandfather. But in usual, the grandfather is a Yerachamim, yeah? 
Just let him, let him, let everything go, let everything go. He's wrong, you know, let it go. The father, on the other hand, is the one with the, you know, why? Because the father is Dean. He's Ze'eran Pin. He is, he's short, he's a short trigger. You understand? Because he has to give the Chinuch. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when you in the time of the flood, he used to live long lives. Why long lives? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is in a state of revealment of Keter. And the grandfather, like, in a, like a grandfather, mm. like a Saba, like a Saba. But now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't reveal himself like that anymore. Only a couple of times when, in Elul, on Yom Kippur, and only for a short amount of time. When else? Can anybody tell me, when is the one time? It's once a week. Hashem reveals himself in that Shabbat. state. When on Shabbat? Minchav. Shabbat. Minchav Shabbat. Thank you very much. <laughs> During Minchav Shabbat, the Idra Rabbah says, that the Kadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself in the state of Keter, Arich and Bein. And you know what's the one thing in this world that shows that you're connected to Arich and Bein? Physically, not emotionally or uh, how you say, um, your attributes. But attributes would be total mercy, total love. But in your face, in your body, what in your body shows that you're connected to that state of Arich and Bein? I'll give you a hint. The Ariya Kadosh says, that that chas v'shalom to even your beard. Your beard. I said it. The beard. Your beard has thirteen parts to it. Thirteen. That beard is connected to Ari Chantim. The Ari Kadosh used to say chas v'shalom a few litlos one. We're a rage generation of Yatme the Yatme Chas v'shalom. You know we're already you know. Uh, no, we know Hashem doesn't change his mind. Excuse me. Uh, maybe that's in the other across the street. They change their mind over there. <laughs> Every other thing over there, they change their mind. Different versions. But Akadosh Baruch Hu, the point is that Ari Pin is considered the Dikna. Yag Tikune Dikna. Where does Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, another Jewish trivia? I like this kind of stuff. And what, what part of the Zohar, Akadosh people learn the Zohar, how the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai goes piece by piece explaining these 13 attributes of the beard. We read it every Shavuot night. Tashlich, where is that written here? That Tashlich is part of what part of the Zohar? The Idra Rabbah. In the Idra Rabbah, it's called the Great, the Great uh, Company, the Great Assembly. Thank you very much. To, from the from the light that was revealed, two students of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai passed away. Two students of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Nishamot went up. Two or three, I think it was two. Uh, I had the zechut. One was Rabbi Yosef Bar Yaakov. I had the zechut, me and my wife, to go and sit in the exact spot that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai taught the Idra Rabbah. I, I sat over there in the same spot where Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and how do I know it's the real spot? The Ariya Kadosh gives the coordinates. In Shara Gil Gulim at the end, he gives the exact coordinates, where to go, where it is. And right next to where he sat with his, with his students, the, the grave of those two students that passed away, Rabbi Yosef Bar Yaakov and I think Rabbi Hizkiah, they passed away right there and they're buried right there. Back then, there was no kind of thing. You, you pet, right away they used to have it. The Zohar Kadosh says whoever holds the dead body for too long, he does such an avla. He does such a bad thing for the nishama. Is it an averado? You can't say it's an avera because it's only written in the Zohar Kadosh. Avera is what's written in the Torah, but it's not something that we recommend. It's like the same thing, you know, I told you guys in uh, Shabbat, Ashur and Shabbat. Three things the Zohar says, a person who does that, he doesn't know how he's cursing himself. Yeah, but what are you doing in Shabbat? Three Shabbat things. Shabbat. Uh, Shabbat is Shabbat. What could you do? Should David HaMelech passed away on Shabbat. The Gemara says in Masachet, in Masachet Shabbat that uh, Shalom HaMelech had to bring the eagles to, to... He knew how to speak to eagles. He was 12 years old. Had to spread their wings over David HaMelech's uh, body so that the heat wouldn't... Wouldn't, uh, would, uh, it wouldn't uh, cause the body to deteriorate. So, Shabbat is Shabbat. Nothing beats Shabbat. Remember, Shabbat is main olam haba. It's just we don't have the feeling. We're numb. We're numb. We don't have the feeling to feel Shabbat. We think Shabbat is another day where we can't do anything. Adraba. Shabbat is a day where we have to connect to Hashem till we feel olam haba. There was one Hasid Sharebi. Don't get me started. There was one Hasid Sharebi. He would never sleep on Shabbat. Why? He says, I'm Shomer Shabbat. How does a person who's Shomer Shabbat sleep on Shabbat? If you have a security guard, you have a security guard. He's, you, 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 you tell him to, to watch the door. And you suddenly, you see he fell asleep on the job. You're going to keep him for the job? Yalla, you're going to throw him out. So the, that Hasidic Rebbe used to say, how am I going to be a Shomer Shabbat if I'm sleeping on Shabbat? For him, that was the... Uh, 
You know what I'm talking about? That was the oomph. That was, that was Shabbat. That was Shabbat. Now, the Shomer Shabbat is not what you think. I didn't go to work. I didn't turn on the light. That's Shomer Shabbat. If I took a plate, and on my plate I have this cake and a cake that I don't like. And I take the cake that I don't like and I throw it out. I am liable, not me, someone else is liable to Chiyuskila at that moment. He did Borel on Shabbat. Does that count for bones too? No, if it's Derech Achila, it doesn't count. If you learn Halakha, I cannot teach you guys Halakha no, Shabbat sorry, right now. Sorry. Don't throw this Halakha right now because then we're going to go on a totally thing. I'm just letting you know, how come that's Chilul Shabbat? I want to ask you guys a question. How many curses, Tlalot? 98. That's in the Torah. But how many curses did Hashem curse Adam, Chava, in the land? Seven. Give it a give a guess. 39. Thank you very much. Those 39 curses? Are the 39 malachot? What Hashem says, Bezaat apecha tochal lechem. All those 39 curses is what we do to work. You ever see how a farmer, um, the, the bread that you eat, the stuff that you eat, how he plants, Zorea, Horesh, all these things, yes. the clothes that you have, Sovea, these 39 malachot are the 39 curses that Hashem cursed Adam, Eve, the snake, and the earth. 39 curses. And what do we do when a person works on Shabbat? The Gzorah Kador says, in multiple places, it's as if he was just Adam Arishon, and he had to test again to eat from the tree, and he did it again. And he did it again. That's Chilul Shabbat. So a person comes to, he has a test of Chilul Shabbat. How in the world, if you know the Pnimuta Torah, if you know the innards of the Torah, how could you do Chilul Shabbat? It's impossible. Shabbat... Uh, it should come twice a week. And understand? What happens? Person, we're so... I'm going to tell you guys a story. A story. Not a story. A vort. The, the Shara Gilgulim says, Why did David HaMelech... If I would have the possibility, I would open up the page to you right now, but this is not the book that I have at home, but it's in Hagdama Zayin. Hagdama Zayin of Shara Gilgulim. In the Bnei Aharon, Rav Shimon Agassi, Rav Yudaptai, his Rebbe and friend. He says that there were two people in the world that fixed their neshama in one Gilgul. One was David HaMelech. That nobody else did in the history of their life. They don't have to come back in a Gilgul even. These guys, they're done. They came one time and they finitos. One was, believe it or not, you guys just said David HaMelech. That's why you read Tehillim so much. Tehillim is a product of a finished soul. It's a product of a finished soul. And the second one is Daniel. Daniel, in the book of Kituvim, that's why God tells him, Lech le goralcha, go to your goral, but tanuch le ketzayamin. Wake up, when are you going to wake up? And you know, tchet ha-metim. That means, till tchet ha-metim, you don't have to come back. You're done. Your job is done. Funny thing is, both of their names begin with what letter? Dalet. And the letter Dalet in Kabbalah is not a good letter. It stands for Dala Ve'aniya. Poor and uh, miss, it's missing something. You know, you're, The Dalet always comes to with the letter Gimel. How do we know that? Yaakov Avinu called his son God. God. God is Gomel Dalim. The Gimel gives the Chesed to the Dalet. These two men, even though they came from this Shorish Nishama, they reached a level that no human being has ever reached, even though Moshe Rabbeinu in Nevi'ut, in prophecy. But don't forget, Moshe came with a soul that included all of Am Yisrael. Why was Moshe Rabbeinu crying so much to Hashem, bring me into Eretz Yisrael? Bring me into Eretz Yisrael, bring me into Eretz Yisrael, bring me into Eretz Yisrael. Five, how many prayers he did? 5.15. Five, 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 where is it written? Where is the source of that? Midrash Rabbah, Parashat, Zot over there. Not in the Vet Hanan, but the Baracha says over there that he prayed 515 prayers. Kimyan Vet Hanan, there was a rabbi called the Megale Amukot of Nathan Shapira. He was a big Mikubal. He has a Chidushim on the Otrot Chaim. Very big Mikubal. He writes a whole book, 515 Perushim on the word Vet Hanan. It's called Megale Amukot. I once tried to buy the book, it cost like $500. $515. I don't think so. I think maybe 515. <laughs> that would make sense, actually. It was very expensive. I didn't have the... I don't know if it's still available, but I wanted to buy the book. 
and uh, it was very expensive. Whatever the case is, Moshe Rabbeinu, why did he crave so much to go into Israel? That's just really simple. His neshama will never be finished until he goes inside Israel and does the mitzvot of Israel. That means, therefore, Hashem told Yehuda, at kiyavo, at kiyavo, until when? Until who's going to come? Shiloh, 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 Shin Yud Lamed A. Shin Yud Lamed A. Gematria. Moshe. Moshe who a goel a rishon. Moshe who goel a charon. Moshe Rabbeinu, his tikkun is not finished. You know when his tikkun is finished? Hopefully tomorrow we're going to hear the shofar. Eliyahu Anavi, Mashiach Tzitkenu. He's Moshe Rabbeinu. If there's one Gilgul you need to know, for sure, 100%. There is no Pshetlach. And us, we're going to be Dora Midbar. We're going to be Dora Midbar, for sure, 100%. If Mashiach, it's, everything comes out. History repeats itself. There's no such kind of thing as something new. And Hadash, Tachadashem. There's nothing new. Everything repeats. It's the shame Shibirat HaKelim. Shibirat, the breaking of the vessels happened in the world of Nikudim. It happened again at Adam HaRishon. It happened again at Noah. It happened again when the brother sold Yosef. It happened again in Mitzrayim. It happened again with Yoshua and Yericho. It happened again during the Shoftim. It just keeps on happening over and over until there's going to be one generation where all we need is how many men? Ten. Ten, that's it. Zorah Chadash says, Rabbi Eliezer told Rabbi Yoshua. It's when one of Shiurim, not long ago. All we need is ten guys who have to be ten different spherot. <clears throat> That's the punchline. That I don't know. That's the punchline. It can't be ten of the same sphere. Ah, that's the, first time I hear that part. Uh, that's the punchline. They have to be ten different spheres, and we need ten spheres to come together, and we have to love each other. Why? How do we know that it has to be that case? Right? Because you think it hasn't been tried before. The Rashash tried it. The Ari tried it. The Chida tried it. There were ten men. They wrote Shtavit Shtarit Kashru. Ten men. Ten Talmidim. Ten buddies. They all signed a letter. We love each other. Our wife calls this, that. No. First, my friend. <laughs> Sounds a little weird, huh? Bro, but these bro. are not regular friends. These are friends of Tzadikim, Kedoshim, Teorim. My friend is in trouble. What do you mean he's in trouble? He's in debt? No kind of thing. All ten friends would come together, bail him out. He needs a kid right now. All ten friends would come, break the Shamayim and David. This one needs to get married. Ten friends would come together, David for him. <laughs> What happened? One one group got really got really uh, close. The Ari's group in the Shari Gilgulim, right? They got really close. The Ari even got them all houses in the same what we call in Bukhari Machale, in the same uh, Chatzer. What happened? One Arab Shabbat. It always happens on Arab Shabbat. The Satan. And what does the Satan come to? Not the guys. Comes to the Haisha Shana Tata'i Madi. They came. This one fought with this one. This one got the husband involved. The husband's fought. And the Ari Kadosh passed away in the Hei Ba'av not long after that. And the Ari Kadosh said on himself, he didn't say it on himself. Look at the Ari Kadosh, he hinted it that he was Mashiach ben Yosef, not Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef. And then after that, it was supposed to be Rabbi Chaim Vital. But Rabbi Chaim Vital, when he was, you guys don't know this, when he made the whole jump to Damascus, to Damascus the chief Dayan, I'm not going to say his name, I know his name. The chief Dayan. You know what a Dayan is? All of our minds have to work on the same speed as one Dayan. That's what that's a kind of speed the mind of a Dayan has to work. The, the chief Dayan of Damascus at that time made on him such a hashmatzot. He made him into a crazy guy. He closed his shul down. It was a big balagan over there in Damascus. And uh, it was uh, basically he broke the whole coming of Mashiach together. Rabbi Chaim Vital was supposed to be Mashiach, but he was supposed to be Mashiach ben Yosef. <laughs> Mashiach ben Yosef, he was supposed to be, and he, he wasn't. It broke. And just like the Ari passed away at that time, the Nishama of Yosef at Sadiq went to Rabbi Chaim Vital and stood it. People think it's a descendant of Yosef at Sadiq. It cannot be because Yosef at Sadiq does not live with us. There are Shvatim, there's three different opinions. One says they're. Before the Nahar Sambation, one says they're in front of the Nahar Samb uh, inside the Nahar Sambation. There's another place that says that they were Gole to some places in Afghanistan. So there's three different, it's a Yerushalmi. So we don't know exactly where the ten tribes are. It, it warrants its own shiur. Where the ten tribes are, different rabbis who saw them, rabbis who forged letters from them and made it seem like they saw them. Whole big balagan over there. I don't want to get into it right now. I just want to let you guys know one thing. If the ten tribes don't come, it's not a big deal. Why? In the 
but even if they don't, it's not a big deal. Why? In the time of Yoshiyahu HaMelech, which is the Melech before Yehoyachin Tzitkiyahu, we were two brothers, so the Melech before them, he was considered Mashiach Hashem. If you open the book of Jer- uh, Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, the book of Echa, we read in Tisha B'Av, it says over there, Al-Ele Anu Bukhiyah, I'm crying. Who is he crying for over there? On the death of the king Yoshiyahu. He had he did such a mitzvah, did such he was the one who destroyed the Egel Azav of Yoravan Ben Avat. Even Chizkiyahu Amelak didn't do it. Even Asa Amelak didn't do it. Even Yotam Amelak, he destroyed it. It says there was the book of Kings says there was no king that ever lived that did Shuvah like Yoshiyahu Amelak. More than Chizkiyahu Amelak. Yoshiyahu Amelak, he he died. When he died, Yermiyahu says the Mashiach died. He was supposed to be the Mashiach. Why was he Mashiach? In his time, he brought back some of the ten tribes. People don't know this. They don't read the Masechet Megillah. In his time, some of the ten... He sent Jeremiah, the prophet, to bring them back. If they would have all come back, there would have been no Chorban B'Tamidash. They didn't want to come back. They didn't believe. They said, your meow prophesies, it has to be destroyed. We're not coming back. Same thing with the Temanim, some, some, same thing with the Jews of Germany. You think the Jews of Germany are there from the second Beit HaMikdash? It says the Jews of Germany are there from the time of Shlomo HaMelech. They're there in Germany. Jews were in Spain, we have records, from almost the time of the uh, first Beit HaMikdash. We think Jews only say, we're businessmen, guys. These, these people, they went out to places. Remember, all the time when they were Jews in Israel, they were Jews in Iraq, too. When Jews were suffering during the Khorban, there were Jews in Iraq that had a good life over there. Just like in the Holocaust, the Jews of Ashkenaz were suffering and the Jews of Israel, Israel, I wouldn't say they were not suffering. General Rommel was coming, it's a whole history within itself, but they didn't suffer the same thing as them. There was a pogrom in Iraq too, but it wasn't the same thing. You can't compare 350 dead to six to seven, between six and seven million. Who knows, maybe it's even more. How many kids were put inside monasteries, Catholic schools, I read a story once, there was one guy, Lo Aleinu, he put his daughter in a monastery, a Catholic ma- monastery in Poland. When he came back after the war, he survived, he went inside of there to save her, because he could only save one or the other. He put her in there, he found her. He found her, he says, I promise to you, it, it's recorded. That f- he said, this is where he says, 90% of the kids over there were Jewish. That's what he says, he says I wish I could have saved all of them, like, I only had the chance to save my daughter. He says, I promise, I saw these kids' faces, I saw Jewish faces. These were Jews. Who knows how many Jews there are out there? They don't know they're Jewish. At the same time, how many Jews there are out there who think they're Jewish? And they're not Jewish. So we have to understand one thing. Shea Torah, it's, it's never face value. You never get face value. You have to know the innards. You have to know the pinyu. That's what the Zohar comes to explain. So Yoshiawa Amedech, he brought back the ten tribes. In this room right now, we could be some of us over here from one of the ten tribes. We don't know. The majority, vast majority, yes, from Yehuda and Binyamin. But why are we all called Yehudim? Rashi says, because we are Modeh in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not that, not, that, not that we're from Yehuda necessarily. Could be very, very thing that we're from different tribes. But, and there's always been a machlok between Ashkenazim and Sfaradim. Are Ashkenazim Yehuda and Sfaradim Binyamin? Or Binya, or you, Sfaradim Yehuda and Ashkenazim Binyamin? It's always been a machlok at Rabbi Eliyawa Itamari, the Baal Shevet Musar says that Sfar, Sfaradim are from Yehuda and Ashkenazim are Binyamin. But the Ashkenazim say that they're from Yehuda and we're from Binyamin. Who knows the truth? Only Eliyahu and Avi is going to come and going to reveal the truth. He's not going to say if you're Jew- he's He will not say if you're Jew- If you say you're Jewish, you're Jewish. But he will say if you're a Kohen or not or a Halal or not a Kohen. If you're a Levi or you're not a Levi. Anyways, let's get back to the... Uh, kind, we, and kind and have. <laughs> it's been about 40 minutes, 49, 50 minutes. Sorry about that. Let's go back to what we were talking about before. But Torah, that's how it, that's, that's what Torah is. It's, it's uh, what, there's four four rivers that came out of Gan Eden: Pishon, Gihon, Hidekel, and Prat. Why is the last Why is the last uh, river called Prat? Ra- you learn You learn Rashi. What does Rashi say? Shememav, Parin, Veravin. Its waters give birth to more waters. That river gave birth to many more rivers in the world. 
You understand? So that's how Torah is. Torah is perat. That's what it is. Ben porat Yosef. That's the power of porat. Porat is the shame. If you gematria porat, ab, sag, ma, ben, kasa, kama, kana, which is the, the main shemot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, going to be 72, 63, 45, 52, uh, 161, 140, 142, kamag, and 151, if you put them all together, you're going to get Gematria Porat. That's the secret when Yaakov Avinu put his hands on Yosef at the end and he said, Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat, because I'm blessing you with all the Shemot. Why? He needed all the Shemot because he was how many years in the jail? How many years he was? 12. But he needed to be in there one more year, to be 13 years. For that, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had to do another 13 years to finish that one year that Yosef was supposed to be in there. So what about Pashut, guys? Now, for Cain and Hevel, I think it's going to be Chaval if I speak about them right now. Because it's only a couple of minutes left. It's, I need a whole shiur for it. And we start talking about Adam Rishon and the Tikkunim and Mashiach, this, that. We didn't get to. But I'm going to tell you guys something. It's going to be our next shiur. We're not going to even talk about Lech Lecha. I still want to talk about Bereshit. It will. Lean at it. No, Sefer Bereshit, yeah. I want to talk about one thing about Kain and Heaven. I'm going to give you a little small teaser. How is that? A teaser. Preview. Preview. Trailer. Stay tuned. Kain and Hevel, the Gemara says that they were born before the sin. Two went on the bed, seven came out. How would seven come out right out of the bed? Only on one condition. If there was no pregnancy. That means she got pregnant right away. And she gave birth right away. Kai. I was telling somebody once, thank you for saying Kai, <laughs> but I was saying somebody once, he says, oh, something happened to me, something in his life, nothing happened, Baruch Hashem, this, that. I said to him, well, you think Hashem is your Chas Shalom friar? If it's not going to come to you out this way, it's going to come to you out a different way. <laughs> and I said, don't think Hashem is your Kai. Nothing... Nothing passes the Hashgacha HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Everything is Meduyak Lafli Lafli I was saying Mafli Wait, come down, what's the first bracket? Umafli La'asot What's Mafli? Gotcha, Aleph Aleph Mafli Aleph That Aleph In the Aleph is everything In the letter Aleph It's the most uh, How you say It's the most intricate letter In the whole Torah And it's the first letter If you ask me The first letter should be Yud, right? A dot Start with a dot what is the first, What's the first letter Of the Aleph bit? <laughs> Aleph, it's the hardest letter. It's three letters. Vav, Yud, Yud. Why? It's simple, it's one. At the same time, it's the most complicated. If you want to make your life complicated, it'll be complicated. If you want to make your life simple as one, it'll be one. The choice is up to you. So anyways, the Zohar says, the Zohar disagrees with the uh, Gemara. The Zohar is written by Rishim Wambad Yochai. It has the right to disagree with the Gemara and Ba'ayah. The Zohar says, Cain and Hevel were not born before the sin. They were born after the sin. That makes the biggest change in how we see the story. Because if they were born before the sin, how could they sin? That means the test that they were supposed to have was supposed to be on the same level of Adam Arishon. That was their test to eat from the it, it's Hadat. But the Zohar says that wasn't their test. Their test was to learn how to live together. Ahavat uh, chinam. That's the test we live in right now. Ahavat chinam. That was their test. Why? Adam Arishon in Shara Psukim of the Ariya Kadosh in Parashat Bereshit, I was learning this past Shabbat, says one of the sins of Adam, he, he counts over there eight sins of Adam Arishon, and that one sin. One sin of Adam Arishon was when you make a child, the child, the tipa, comes from your brain. Why? You need a, a person, for lack of a better word, needs arousal. He needs to be awakened. Better word. He needs to be awakened. Without the awakening that comes from the dad, it's hadad, he's not going to be able to do a zivug. Right? In the sin of Adam Arishon, when he sinned the it's hadad, the arousal, the awakening came from the enaim. 
the eyes. That's why it says, Vatere Haisha. And the woman saw. That was the wrong thing to do. Why? The Gemara says that when a woman asks for a zivug, it's not good. She's supposed to hint to the zivug, not ask for it. And what does the Torah say? Vatere Haisha. She saw the tree that it was good. She initiated the zivug. Adam Arishon was not even there during the whole time. Where was he? Where was he doing? We talked about that today. Nobody knows? That's next. That's next. That's next week's shiur. Where was Adam Arishon over there? Making such the game with the angel, yeah? The wedding was over. The wedding was over at that point, I'm assuming. There was everything fast over there. It wasn't like today, six hour doire for 30 minutes. This one doire, that one doire, plof at the end, eggs at the end. It wasn't like that at the end. One, two, three, shashlik. Uh, ala Arayot, Agefen, Lachaim. They didn't have to spend sixty, seventy thousand dollars on a wedding. <laughs> Nobody came. Nobody tangible came to the wedding. There was in Malachim. What are they gonna pay for? <laughs> so Adam Arishon, what did he do? Where was he? So that's a question with it. Where was he? Where was he during the whole thing? Let's just talk about answers this question. In short, I'm going to explain to you guys next week. I'm going to explain to you how Adam Arishon's sin repeated itself in Noah, in Yosef and his brothers, in Hosea ben Be'eri, the Navi Hosea. It, it repeats itself in every generation until M- Moshe was the... He was the breaking. Ezra Sofer was also another thing. But we have to understand how it works. What was the Avera? Because... I was thinking about it the other day, you know, it was it was Parshat Bereshit, we were in the shul, and people are asking me tons of questions. Where was he? How did the snake know? How did I'm like, I told one guy, I says, are you crazy? That's what interests you? The only question that should interest you is what was the sin, and how do I reverse it? How did the snake know? How did he have this? How did he speak? Where was his, one, one person asked, where was his wife? <laughs> Who cares where was his wife? She was in Honolulu. <laughs> That's where she was. Who cares where his wife was? The, 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 all the animals were born, were made, you know, husband and wife. Who cares where his wife was? That, That's important to the story, for the love of God. I once had a book called Midrash Sefer Ayashar. Over there brings all the, uh, maybe because he was lonely, that's why he did everything. I like it. So it says over there in the Sefer Ayashar, all the stories that happened behind the scenes. There's another book, if you guys want to read, called Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer. Amazing book. It says a lot about the behind-the-scenes stories. Okay, in your free time, maybe you could learn. I just want to tell you, what was the sin? How did Cain come out to such a level, such a level, and I'm going to reveal you guys a secret tonight. You will, you never heard the secret in your life, and you're going to enjoy it, Bezot HaShemit Barah. How did Cain get to such a level where he could kill his brother? There's three men in the world, for the love of God. Three. Who was he running away from? He was a Navi. Which only goes to show that you could be a Navi. It doesn't mean you're uh, immune to anything. Like the Jews. They saw what Yechezkel ben Buzi didn't see in his in the Kriyat Yamsuf. And they still, the second, the third, fourth, uh, right after the Egel Azav. Being a prophet doesn't make you immune to anything. Avodat Hashem does. When you work on yourself. So Adam Rishon eats from the tree. He eats with Chava. What does that mean? He eats. What does he eat? Gan Eden says the Ari is in the world of Bina da Asiya. We're in Malchut da Asiya. What did he eat? Is there eating over there? The Ari says also, the Zohar also says in the world of Bina, there's no eating over there. What did they eat? Rabbi Shimon Agassi answers that question. A little Khashuv right now. What exactly was the eating? What this, that? There was a Zivug over there. Kain comes out. She calls him Kain, so the Torah says. But Tomer, Kaniti Ishet Hashem. She, the first person to name a kid in the world was the woman. Mm. Not the man. Still, still. Understand? And she called him a very special name. Kain is the, from the Lashon Tikkun. Kain was supposed to be Tikkun Olam. But there was one mistake. In the Olamot, we have chas- in the Tipa, in your Tipa, you have female in your tipa and you have male. You have the X chromosome, the mashal, and the Y chromosome, right? The male and the female. The X and Y chromosome, in, in Kabbalah, we call it chasadim ugvurot. If the woman is stronger in the zivug, 
the tipa, the X chromosome will win. The female, the gvurot will win. But if the male's machshava is stronger, then the zahar will win inside the, inside the zivu. That determines uh, if it's God. It'll be going to be a boy or a girl. The, yeah, the, the koach of the machshava. Not only during the zivu, during the whole day. Who was preparing Better. stronger? Uh, so, during the zivug of Kain and, and uh, Adam and Hava, the zivug got messed up. Because Hevel was supposed to be born first. Because he was a Zachar. How do we know he was a Zachar? When he gave the korban, Hashem accepted it. Because he was a natural giver. You, did you see how he gave? He didn't just give a, a lamb. The best one. He gave the fattest thing out there with the thickest wool. The more he sweat, the better. Cain, it was his, it was his uh, idea. But what did he give? Flaxseed. For the love of God. Flaxseed. <laughs> He had a he had a machshava why he was doing it. He knew what he was doing. Don't think he was uh he knew exactly what he was doing. And they both did it in the same spot, where, in the future we're gonna build so uh, hopefully soon in our days, Amen. the mizbeach and the bet Amen. That's where they did it. They both did it because that's the only place. That's that's the that's the pipe. You understand? Hashem takes Hevel was supposed to be good, but Cain was born first. Why? Adam Harishon's Avera caused that the dot fell. Where did it fall? Between his two shoulders. Because it fell between his two shoulders, his Moach Adat, the Gvurot came out before the Chasadim. Because the Gvura came before the Chesed, Kain was born first. But there's only one problem with that. When Gvura is born before Chesed, he doesn't have the mituk. He doesn't have the sweetening that he needs. Why? When Chesed comes before Gvura, it, it opens up the spot. It, it, instead of making it claustrophobic, it makes it open. It opens up the spot. Because water, how does water work? It... It spreads, it spreads, it widens, it opens up. What happened instead? Because of the sin of Etz. It's one of the eight sins. The Gvura came before the Chesed, and instead of causing an opening, it made the spot even tighter. Now we understand why women suffer during childbirth. Why is the spot, it's so, till she pushes and has shalom, hemorrhage happens, and lo aleinu, lo aleinu. That's why we say a bracha shelo asani isha. Do you know what they follow, what they go through over there? I just experienced it. It's not a very fun place to be in. And they and it's and it's why when the gvura came out first, it caused the spot to instead of becoming opened like the chesed was supposed to do, it narrowed it. So be'etzef til dibanim. Not Hashem was cursing her. Hashem was telling her, your actions caused that. Shebe'etzev tel di banim. It's not that I'm cursing you. Your actions is mida keneged mida. It caused the narrowing of the spot. And for Adam Arishon, we don't give birth to children. Beze'at apecha tochalechem. You have to do zri'a, harisha. You have to burrow through the land. You have to plant it. You got to pray for rain now. It was supposed to be, you, you planted something that day, it grew, you took it, you cooked it, and you learned Torah. You enjoyed the Ziva Shechina. But now you have to work for it. Because Cain came out like that, it gave him the one attribute. Every soul has a bad attribute to it. It has a good attribute and a bad attribute. The bad attribute of Cain is Kina. Jealousy. Jealousy. That kinah is that zohama hanachash. That's what the chachamim mean. That the nachash was with chava, not that chas ve shalom. He was with chava. 
חס ושלום. הרב פועלים says, whoever thinks that, אינו אלא טועה. חוששני לו מחטאת. But the, what happened was that attribute of קנאה sinked into חווה. That jealousy, and that's why I told today, jealousy is an attribute. I didn't want to say it, but you said it. Feminism, you know. <laughs> so that attribute sunk into them. That's the attribute of the Nachash. Why? How do we know? The letter that represents women in the name of God is which letter? The last hey. That hey turned into a kuf. It extended into a kuf. Kuf is the kina. Next week we will learn exactly how come even though Cain killed Hevel, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, number one, he, he, he didn't just forgive him, he gave him seven generations. Seven. And not only that, from those seven generations caused, uh, how you say, a uh, domino effect that Adam would get back with Chava. And that caused Shet to be born. And Shet to be born is the whole world. And that caused Cain, that Rabbi Chaim Vital came out of him. Rabbi Chaim Vital was Shoresh Nishmat. Cain. He came from Cain. His Nishma was from Cain. And not only that, Yonah Hanavi came from Cain. Moshe was from heaven. And not only that, the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh says the Rabbi Mikomarna came from that Nishama of Chaim Vital that came from Cain. And the Ariya Kalos of Chaim Vital, all the tikkun of the world depends on that Shoresh of Cain. Next week we're going to talk about it, so stay tuned. There's a lot to say. Hopefully you won't get on a tangent. Next week we have to rename the Shi'ur. <laughs> but uh, next week we have to And um, next Sunday is the Brit. I hope to see you guys. Stay tuned to where it will be. We don't know yet. We don't want to cause uh, people to be arrested. We don't want, I wish, I wish there's a school over here. There's school. And uh, this school, they use the lunchroom, the thing, always. But Hashem uh, Barach should uh, bless everyone here with bracha, baslacha, yufua, yushod, gedolo, atzlachot, zivugim agunim. Hashem Yivarech with kulchem bekol meimdav, shetizkul lirot binyan beit amidash ha'shelishim. Amen, amen, amen.